Good morning, everyone. We're down to our last meeting on this lecture series on the rules on criminal procedure. So as a last topic, we're going to discuss about rule 122 or appeal. Okay. Let me share my screen. Right. What is appeal? Appeal is a proceeding for review by which the whole case is transferred to the higher court for final determination. It is not an inherent right of a convicted person, but it is a mere statutory right. Only final judgments and orders are appealable. Now, who can file an appeal? Any party may appeal from a judgment or final order unless the accused will be placed in double jeopardy. So once the accused is acquitted, of the crime charge of him, then the prosecution may no longer file an appeal because if the prosecution files an appeal, then the accused will be placed in double jeopardy. Now, when do you file an appeal? An appeal may be taken within 15 days from promulgation of judgment or from notice of final order appealed from. So if the accused filed a motion for reconsideration, then you count the 15 days from the time of receipt of the denial of the motion for reconsideration. Or for example, the accused filed a motion for no trial, then you count the 15 days from the time of receipt of the ordered or resolution denying the motion for no trial. Now, what is the effect on appeal? One, once an appeal is made, the entire case is thrown open for review. And this includes the review of penalty, indemnity, and the damages involved. Consequently, on appeal, the appellate court may increase the penalty and indemnity of the damages awarded by the court, although the offended party had not appealed from said award. And the party who sought a review of the decision was of the accused. So unlike in a, a civil case, no? Uh, only those issued raised by the appellant or the party filing the appeal will be reviewed. In a criminal case, when the accused files an appeal, then the case is thrown out, thrown up in the open or thrown up out in the open. The whole case will be subjected to review, even if the accused had not assigned it as one of the errors of the judgment. Now, what are the modes of appeal that may be taken from a judgment convicting the accused? The accused may seek a review of said judgment as regards both criminal and civil action. The complainant may appeal only with respect to the civil action, either because the lower court has refused or failed to award damages or because the award made is unsatisfactory to him. Now, what is the effect of perfection of appeal with regard to the jurisdiction of the court? Once appeal is perfected, whether civil or criminal, the court ACO or the court which decided the case will lose jurisdiction over the case, both over the record and over the subject of the case. Now, the failure to serve a copy to the prosecutor is not a defect which can nullify the appeal or prejudice the unquestionable rights of the accused. Now, what are the effects of failure to prosecute an appeal? Huh? For example, a judgment. Uh, so, for example, the, the accused filed an appeal, but he failed to prosecute his appeal. He failed to file the proper pleadings on appeal. Then the judgment of the court convicting him becomes final. The accused cannot be afforded the right to appeal unless he voluntarily submits to the jurisdiction of the court or he is otherwise arrested within 15 days from notice of judgment against him. Now, where do you file the appeal? No, you file the appeal in the regional trial court in cases decided by the first level courts. 
Now, you appeal to the Court of Appeals or the Supreme Court in proper cases, in cases decided by the RTC. You can appeal to the Supreme Court in cases decided by the Court of Appeals. You can appeal to the Supreme Court in cases decided by the Court of Tax Appeals and Bank. And then the Supreme Court in cases decided by the Sandigan Bayan. There are exceptions. If dismissal is made upon motion or with the express consent of the accused, huh? an exception to the exception, insufficiency of the prosecution evidence or violation of the accused right to speedy trial, in which case the dismissal will amount to an acquittal and therefore there can be no appeal. Okay? If the dismissal is not an acquittal or based upon consideration of the evidence on the merits, if the question is purely legal, so that it should, should the dismissal be found incorrect, the case shall be remanded for further proceedings to determine the guilt of the accused. And if there is a showing of grave abuse of discretion, you file a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. Now, what are the modes of review recognized by the rules of court? You can file an ordinary appeal, in which case you file a notice of appeal. You can file petition for review before the uh, Court of Appeals. You can file petition for review on certiorari under Rule 65 to the Court of Appeals and then automatic appeal in cases that the judgment imposed is death. No? There is... A, there is an automatic appeal. Okay. Now, how do you file an appeal? No? Appeal to the RTC from the MTC. You file a notice of appeal with the MTC. And then you serve a copy of the notice to the adverse party. You do not file the notice of appeal with the RTC. You file it with the MTC or the court ACO or court of origin. Now, if you appeal to the court of appeals, then... You, uh, from the decision of the RTC exercising its original jurisdiction no? for offenses with imposable penalty less than reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment, you file notice of appeal with the RTC and serve a copy of the notice of the adverse party. Now, if you appeal to the RTC from the decision of, rather, if you appeal to the Court of Appeals from the decision of the RTC in its exercise of its appellate jurisdiction, meaning the case originally was filed with the MTC and then it was appealed to the RTC. And then from the RTC, it was appealed to the CA. You file a petition for review under Rule 42. Okay. Number three, when the imposable penalty is life imprisonment or rectitution perpetua or a lesser penalty for offenses committed on the same occasion or which arose from the same occurrence. You file notice of appeal with the RTC, serve a copy to the adverse party. Now, when the imposable penalty is death, you appeal to the Court of Appeals, no automatic review yan sa Court of Appeals. Basta ang imposable penalty ay death penalty. Now, to the Supreme Court, all other appeals except decision of the RTC where the imposable penalty is life imprisonment or reclusion perpetua or a lesser penalty for offenses committed on the same occasion or which arose from the same occurrence, petition for review on certiorari via Rule 45. So again, class, when the RTC had rendered a judgment and the imposable penalty is life imprisonment, or reclusion perpetua, or lesser penalty for offense committed on the same occasion or which arose from the same occurrence, you file Rule 45, Petition for Review on Certiorari to the, court, to the Supreme Court. Huh? Okay, appeal to the Supreme Court from CA or Court of Appeals when it finds that death penalty should be imposed automatic review yet. Okay. Okay, where the where, where it imposes preclusion perpetual life imprisonment or a lesser penalty notice of appeal to the Supreme Court from the CA. So if the Sandigan Bayan had rendered the, the decision in its exercise of its appellate jurisdiction for offenses where the imposable penalties, reclusion perpetual or life imprisonment, you file notice of appeal to the court to the Supreme Court. 
On the other hand, if the Sandigan Bayan had rendered a judgment in its exercise of its original jurisdiction for offenses where the imposable penalties, reclusion perpetua, or life imprisonment, then you file notice of appeal to the Supreme Court. Okay? Otherwise, you file petition for review and certiorari of the Supreme Court under Rule 45. Now, what is the effect of appeal by, sever by any several accused? Now, an appeal taken by one or more of several accused shall not affect those who did not appeal, except insofar as the judgment of the appellate court is favorable and applicable to the latter. So, for example, there are three accused and only one of them had appealed the case. And then up there in the Court of Appeals, the Court of Appeals decided for a more hefty fine or a more severe penalty. Question, will that affect those accused which did not appeal the case? Answer, no. The judgment of the appellate court will not be applied to those accused who did not file an appeal. On the other hand, for example, the Court of Appeals had acquitted the accused who had filed an appeal. Question, can the judgment of acquittal of the appellate court be applied to the, those accused who did not file an appeal? Answer, yes. In other words, the judgment of the appellate court can be applied only to those accused who did not file a notice of appeal if the judgment if the judgment is favorable and applicable to them. Now, the appeal, appeal of the offended party from the civil aspect shall not affect the criminal aspect of the judgment or order appealed from. And upon perfection of the appeal, the execution of the judgment or final order appealed from shall be stayed and as to the appealing party. So you can file uh, an appeal, but you can also withdraw the appeal. You can withdraw your appeal before the record has been forwarded by the clerk of court to the proper appellate court as provided by the rules. Then the court may also, in its discretion, allow the appellant to withdraw his appeal provided a motion to that effect is filed before the rendition of the judgment in the case on appeal. Now, the failure of, of the record on appeal to show on its face that appeal was taken within the period fixed by the rules. Then the appeal can be dismissed or failure to file notice of appeal in accordance with the rules, or failure of the appellant to pay the docket and other lawful fees, this can also be a ground for dismissal of the appeal. If there was an unauthorized alteration, omission in the approved record, if there is a failure to serve and file the required number of copies of the memorandum within the time specified, absence of specific assignment of errors in the appellant's brief, or page references to the records are required under Section 13. The failure of the appellant to take necessary steps for correction or completion of the record within the time limited by the court in its order. Okay, so this ends our meeting. I hope you learned something from this lecture series on the rules on criminal procedure. Thank you and hope to see you next semester.